Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Uh, I was pretty reluctant to do this. Uh, I'm, I'm, pr I'm a pretty nervous person, I can't lie. But um, a lot of my friends always told me, bro, you should do stand up. You should like, you should actually like make a YouTube channel. Like people will really subscribe. I was like, nah, that's, that's not the life for me. Like, that's not my life. I feel like comedians don't have a happy life. Like, look at Robin Williams. Like, he, like, I'm not trying, that's, that's bad, that's really bad to say, but like, they're not, they're not happy on the inside. Like, they might show that they're happy, but on the inside, they're actually sad. But, uh, yeah, I, was, I, I feel like this is a blessing. Like, uh, God has been giving me a lot of blessings in my life, and I, I consider this one of them. And, a little analogy that I use, like, I feel like God's a point guard, and I'm always open for the three, and he's yelling, shoo, shoo. <laughs> but, uh, seriously, I feel like I'm really blessed. Uh, okay, uh, how many, uh, I'm guessing all of you guys with IPY, right? Can I get a woo? Nice. Woo! Uh, yeah, that's that's what to be proud about. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm born, I was born in Indianapolis, so like IPY is like the equivalent to like Brown Mackey, ICDC College, or my favorite, or my favorite, the Crib University. And, like, I, I don't know, but I just, I, I, I just always took IPY for granted. But you might be wondering, okay, why, why'd you go here then? Great question. Uh, in high school, I did, so, I, okay, in high school, I was really average, I'll be honest with you. I had super high expectations for myself. And my expectation, I, I had those expectations because of my sister. My sister did pretty well in high school. They, they went off to do good things too. So me, seeing my sister do well, I was, worried, I was in the eighth grade writing my valedictorian speeches, <laughs> deciding between Harvard and Yale. Well, I mean, you can look at me now, but it's, it's, it's sad, it's pretty sad. But I always had high hopes for myself and it, and it caused me to fail. But, uh, so, I did the bare minimum, but I still struggled, and I, I'll let you know, I'll let you know later. Uh, well, as you, as you guys might know, I'm a first generation American. Where are my first gens at? Woo! Uh, yeah, that's, that's nothing to be happy about. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing to be happy about. You, it, being a first gen is a, is a big responsibility. You have, to you have to think about your ancestors and your offspring. So think about this, your ancestors, you, you have to think about how you might tarnish their name or like the legacy that they hold and your offspring. Like if you, any bad decision that you make is on your head. So you could, any, so you can't mess up. Like don't mess up. Uh, but I just, have, have you, have any of you ever watched the show uh, What's the show? It's, it's with Henry Louis Gates. Uh, Finding Your Roots. You guys ever watch that? PBS? I, I'm the only favorite person who watched PBS probably. Yeah. But, uh, Henry Louis Gates is an old dude who like interviews like celebrities and he basically talks about, he, talk, he talks to them and tells them about their history, their genealogy. And Henry Louis Gates is a pretty cool guy, but I just imagine him talking to me, not talking to me, but talking to my ancestor, one of my like great, great grandsons. And he's like, oh, well, uh, Henry did uh, stand up here in 2018, and but I mean Henry Louis Gates is like 95 years old, so I, I just don't. It's, it was a bad joke, my bad guy. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you guys, no, nobody, nobody knew who, nobody knew who, who Henry Louis Gates was. That's crazy. But look him up. Actually, look him up. He's, he's an old dude. But um, it's, it's, there's some big shoes to fill. Being a being a person, some big shoes to fill. But um, honestly. The, the biggest uh, struggle I had in my life was having an identity crisis. And I'll, I'll remember being in the first grade, I would, I would just talk to myself. And I would be like, who am I? Am I black? Am I African? And I knew one thing for certain, I was definitely black. <laughs> Being black, I was never accepted by my black friends, and I was always confused, like why they never accept me. And I, and I have some, I, I have some reasons in my mind. One might be my, my name. I don't have a regular name that other Americans have. And uh, another reason, uh, some other reasons might be like my parents. And 
I don't know if any if any foreign people. I, I mean, anybody here has talked to like a foreign parent. A, a conversation could go from like, uh, "Hi, how are you doing?" to, "Oh, what are you doing with your life?" Like, <laughs> it, 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 just, it goes deep. They go deep into your soul and try to find anything, any problem. So, and then, but I don't think that was the reason. I I, I know the reason, and it was because they. They would, uh, it was from when they stepped on my porch. They didn't even have to go inside my house, and they knew. And it was, a, when they went inside my house, they would see, they would see decorations, and they would see uh, how the house was arranged. And they never questioned that. They always, they always had one reason. It was the way I smelled. <laughs> okay. And coming from an African house, it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a stench. It wasn't a stench. It just like, you, it was a certain smell. And, and they could smell it on me. They could smell, smell it on me at school. And they always ask me, what is that smell? What is it like? Like, damn, bro, did you, did, did you go to, uh, did you go to White, White Castle for breakfast? Like, I was like, yeah, man, come on now. Like, but they, they would just gun me. They would gun me all the time. And I tried, I tried to cover it up and use the best weapon ever possible. And you can get it at your local CVS's, Walgreens, convenience stores. Don't say axe. It, it's axe. It's axe. Uh, <laughs> and that, if you ever smell uh, like a, a foodish smell or like a, a a smell and axe combined, is not something you want to smell. Oh. And people people knew where I was just from my scent. They they were just, they were asking for me. They were like, "Where's Henny at?" Yeah, he's down the hallway. So it was, it was just it was just weird. But um. The, okay, the main part of my identity crisis growing up uh, had to do with my name. And I don't know if any, anybody here had to read The Crucible in high school or you got watched the movie. Um, nobody? Yes. Yes. Okay, The Crucible. Well, in The Crucible, there was a, there was a guy named John Proctor. That, this is basically all I remember. I didn't really read the book. I, I probably just watched the movie. I, I, didn't read, I didn't do anything in high school, honestly. I got by. I don't know how. But uh, he, his name was John Proctor. and. He was about to he was about to die somehow. I don't remember. He was about to get hanged. And he they're telling him to sign this paper. And basically, John Proctor, he, he something stuck out to me in that movie. He said one thing. It was like the last scene he was about, when he was about to die. This is my reenactment of John Proctor. Because it is my name! Because I cannot have another in my life! Because I I lie and cite myself to lies. How am I live without my name? Haven't I given you my soul? Leave me my name. <laughs> and it stuck out to me. I was like, that's really deep. That's really deep. And, but I never thought much of it until like recently. Oh, if you guys didn't know, my name is pronounced Heno Betterhead Testify. That's my full name. Say it again. Say it again. Heno Betterhead Testify. Hey. Uh, Betterhead being, me, being my dad and Testify being a other somebody far down. And Growing up, everybody had a different name for me. Uh, I would go to school or be, be in a supermarket in, or anywhere, just introducing myself, and they would they would come back to me as, oh, is your name Henock? Henock? Hancock? <laughs> Handel? <laughs> Henrik? Handel. Yo. But some bad, some bad ones were, Nook Nook. <laughs> I, I had a neighbor that always called me Nick. And I just, I just let it slide. I was like, all right, I'm just not gonna correct him. Like, he's an old dude. And one day he was just calling me. He was like, hey, Nick, Nick, Nick. I'm just, I'm looking around for a Nick. I'm gonna find a Nick. And, and I eventually knew he was calling my name. And I was like, oh, what's up, man? But I never corrected them. And uh, I, I, always, I always hated the first day of school or like the first week of school because they would always butcher my name, always. They would, and then, so, it would be a substitute or like a new teacher. They'll be like, Jose, here. Mary, here. And then they'll be like, he, he. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm saying this wrong. Henrik? And then the thing is, from first to 12th grade, I never corrected them. It would be my classmates correcting them in unison. It's Henrik. And that wasn't even how, to, how my name was pronounced. And I just let it slide too. I, I just let it slide. But, but they called me Hennig in high school. Uh, if you guys didn't know, um, I just, I just, it was just, it just came out so smoothly to them, and I just never corrected anybody about it. It was, it was never a problem. 
Um, I never felt like I never felt like I had to correct him. It's like somebody, okay, pretend you had a friend named John all your life, and then one day he's like, oh, my name's Peter now. You, you, there's no one to be like, shut up, John. Shut up, John. That, your name's not Peter. So, um, I remember, it, I don't know, it was, just, it was just odd to me how they, I would tell them how my name was pronounced, and they would still call me that. Even, I, I try to correct them sometimes. But, like, I had, people, I had kids at school named ABCD, pronounced obesity. And, and this is true, this is true. And she was, she was overrated, no, like, I, I felt bad, I felt bad. Uh, but it just always made me confused why they couldn't, couldn't literally just say, hand, oh, like, it, it wasn't that hard. Uh, but I, I get it, linguistically, like, some people can't pronounce certain certain terms, like, certain words, vowels, syllables, and I, I get that, I respect that. But, like, if you can pronounce a word like Alexandria, or like exalophone or triple decaphobia. Like you can, oh come on now, like you can pronounce hand oh, it's, it's not that hard. <laughs> but, uh, sorry guys. Uh, it just made me sick. It just made me sick, honestly. And uh, and okay, okay, growing up like in the early two thousands, going to school, being African was not hot. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, not hot at all. You, uh, it wasn't all this dashiki wearing, uh, pan Africanism, or the movie that movie that just came out last week, Black Panther. It wasn't all that. It wasn't that at all. It was. Nah, nah. It wasn't that. Nah. Being, no, being African meant you had to represent all 54 countries in Africa. That's fine. You weren't. You. They didn't. Africa was one country to them. So they would be like, Oh, how's Africa? It is doing great. Thank you for asking. It's doing great. Thank you. So, but with that, they would ask me questions. And the questions would be some crazy stuff. And some questions would be like, do you eat zebras? And those are, those were the good ones. Those were, the, those were for my teachers. Those were, I'm, I'm be honest with you, those were for my teachers. The, the worst ones were the kids. The kids are the meanest creatures alive. I'm telling you. They would they ask me questions like they would ask me questions like, did you swim here? Can you read? <laughs> like, I, like how do you how do you say my name in Africa? They just say African. How do you say my name in Africa? And I was just I was just I was just, I was just, I was just slide. And then it got so bad. I remember one kid literally was like, I think you're the blackest person I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I just I I could I just like I gave up I gave up at that point. <laughs> Uh, but if me being me being that young, I, I feel like I was mature. I feel like I was a genius when I was a kid because like I was just a, I was just beyond what how they thought. Like I was thinking about things like global warming and Al Gore being president. Like I didn't even understand why they were like asking me dumb questions like this. And I remember like Avril Lavigne was uh, really popular at that time. And rest in peace, Avril Lavigne. She's not alive right now. So I don't know whoever. She, rest in peace. But, but I just remember singing, I just remember singing, It's a faithful night, I'm gonna get proud of this But it was just, it was just sad. I was just always like confused. What, who am I? Like, am I, if I'm not, if I'm not black and I'm not African, like, what am I? Like, I knew I was both of those, but I could never relate to them. So I was like in my own space. I was in my own area. And I, that, that was like my identity crisis. So at, at home, I would be called Heno. And being Heno, I was the nice kid, uh, didn't really get in trouble, just watched Jeopardy at home with my mom. Like just, just chill, I was, I was just Heno. But when I got to school, I was, hey, Hendy, Hendy, what's up, G? And like, I never, I can never like have a, like a middle. I can never like, What's, what's the thing in the middle of a, a diagram? A medium. I don't know if that's what it's called, but like, that's not, that's, that's not what it is. That, uh, but yeah, I can never have that. I can never have a medium. And it just, it always puzzled me. And I, and I struggled with it because I just didn't know who I was. I didn't know how to act. I just, I didn't want to like make my parents sad, like seeing me act a certain way or make my, like not have any friends at school. But be, me being Hen Hennig was like, it was fun. Like I was the class clown. Uh, everybody knew me. I was just, I was the, I was that kid. So, uh, sorry guys. 
But uh, basically, have you ever, have you guys ever seen the movie Split? Yeah. Uh, it, it, who was that? Who, who basically that? Uh, uh, but until like last semester, la okay, la so I don't know, me coming to college, I basically told myself that I will not be called Hennick anymore because that's not who I am. That's not, I, I'm, not I'm not that person. And, but I'm not that person and I just, I just realized that and it, it took me a long time, but uh, last semester I was going through like an identity crisis, quarter life crisis type thing. <laughs> yeah, quarter life crisis. I'm, I'm, about, to, I'm about to be 20, so. I mean, no, seriously. Because I, I just felt like I, I didn't understand. I mean, I'm from Indianapolis and I go to IPY, so it was just like, a, I didn't want to be here. I'm, I'm tired of being here, you know? It was just like, Indy's, Indy's played out. It's played out. Sorry, guys. It's, it's played out. You, you guys know more than, more than I do. But. I was just coming to terms and I stumbled upon a book that my sisters always told me to read and I, was, I had that ego. I was like, nah, I'm not reading that, I'm not reading that. And eventually I, I just stumbled upon it and I read it, uh, The Autobiography of Malcolm X. And that, and Ben, ben, ben Savage always, always gets me on that, on Malcolm X, but. Uh, Who's Ben Savage? All right, well, when, when, I, when I read that book, I basically found out that Mal Malcolm, um, his name was Malcolm Little. And he changed his name to Malcolm X. And X basically meant, he, X uh, like defined all his ancestors and like their names. So he, he knew that he wasn't Malcolm Little, but he, so he claimed the, the term Malcolm X. And I always like, me myself, like I, I wasn't ashamed to be African, but I just wasn't like proud. Like I wasn't like, oh, I have my own name. I have my own heritage. I have my own culture that like nobody can take away from me. And Malcolm, he, he fought to find his culture. He fought, he fought to find all these things that, were, that he had to go out and find when I know where my culture is. And it, it always, play, it always uh, played back in my mind. But, um, sorry guys. Um, anyways, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, just, to, just to end this out, um, I, I basically came to terms with myself and, uh, I'll be no longer be called Hennick. Uh, my name is Hennick Tesfai, and uh, thank you for listening to me. Uh, call, call me on, I'm pretty many. Uh, I'm on all platforms, social media platforms.